Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jia Qin, and this is my good friend Shi Hao, over there. I always learn a lot from him. We are both from Chiang Mai Kou. Um, this is our first time to be in Singapore. Uh, very beautiful country. Uh, welcome to join this session today. We are going to share what researcher, uh, research we are doing recently. The topic is what species of this fish is. Malware classification with graph hash. Uh, this is a show introduced about us. We focus on APD campaign research, including what kind of the malware tools and the technology they use, and uh, how to defense against them, and uh, to build the related stress solution. Let's move on to today's agenda. We will discuss uh, why we want to do this research uh, and uh, what's related to our set and the words to this research. And uh, we will explain the methodology step by step as detailed as we could. Uh, following, is, following up is a simple demo. Uh, we made a PLC and uh, we will demonstrate uh, how to use the PLC to get graph hash. After that is evaluation. We take a campaign named Operation Oka as an example. Uh, Operation Oka is a campaign that we disclosed in 2011. Oh, sorry, 2017. And we will explain uh, what we get on this example. Finally, uh, there are limitation and the conclusion. Uh, next is motivation. So why do we need to uh, do malware classification uh, as a cybersecurity research or handle? Every day we have to deal with a lot of malware samples. Without classifying uh, malware, uh, we might need to analyze uh, malware one by one. Sometimes after analyzing uh, malware, we might understand that this type of malware we have dealt with before. So, I believe some of you suffer this kind of a situation. Um, you might wonder if I could save this time to analyze another unknown malware, um, it will be more efficient. So, that's why, um, that's why, um, malware classification doesn't matter. So with a good malware classification, we don't need to analyze uh, each malware one by one. We could just pick one of 10 similar malwares, analyze it, and then we could learn what this group of malware do. Another motivation is that we want to share cybersecurity intelligence more efficient. In tracking campaigns, it's important to learn what our researchers do. Uh, there are many good reports about APD campaign, and uh, in most of these reports, uh, they offer IFOC that, uh, that are malware checksums such as MD5 or SHA families. However, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> However, you might realize that it's hard to find this sample in your repository or in miles total by malware checksum. Mm. That's, uh, that's one creator of the APD malware samples. They are target some organization and uh, rare. However, it doesn't mean that uh, there is no similar samples in your malware repository or in miles total. So what if there is uh, some checksum that could present a group of similar malwares, and we could look up it just like we look up the MD5 of the malware on my circle. I think uh, it will be great. Okay. So there are a lot of tools that and the work related to um, malware classification field. Uh, they are like weapons that a malware analyzer has. I just this for you stuff, but they should be very practical and widely used. We will check each 
taxonomy very quickly. Uh, they are uh, crypto hash like MD5 and the SHA family, and finally hash like TLSH, SSDIP, and the feature based like import hash or uh, graph hash based like BINDIF or hybrid like uh, import fuzzy is combined future based and the uh, fuzzy hash. There should be a machine learning or AI taxonomy uh, here. However, I'm not expert of AI, so I didn't list it here. The first one is uh, crypto hash. Uh, of course, uh, they are not for malware classification. However, uh, they are very basic, very useful, and widely used nowadays. So uh, they are used to look e look up if one sample is exists or not in the malware repository. The second one is fuzzy hash. It also called uh, CTPH, and it used to match input that has uh, have uh, that 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 have homologies. And uh, in the beginning, it's for digital forensic, such as uh, TLSH and uh, SSDIP. Until uh, until now, the methodology we're talking about is talking whole executable file. Next, we want to introduce uh, future-based methodology, like uh, import hash. Import hash is designed by Mendian. Now it's FireEye. They share their internal malware classification method. Import hash take the import table, import edges table, IAT, as, uh, as the executable future, as, a, uh, as the future of the executable. So you can treat it as a part contents of the executable. And then it create a hash based on the library API names and their specific order within the executable. The next is a hybrid method, like import fuzzy. Import fuzzy basically extends their idea of import hash. Or we could say that it combines import hash and the fuzzy hash. Instantly of um, calculating MD5 of IAT, import fuzzy calculate the SSD per value of uh, executables IAT. It's an idea from Tanunachi Sang from JP Cert. Until now, uh, we all talk about configuration that target uh, on binary content of executable file. No matter no matter how binary content or partial content. Now. There is another taxonomy that is graphic, uh, that is graph based. It's not analyze the difference of the executable from graph point of view. The below picture is a code graph screenshot from IDA Pro. So in grid, um, you can treat it as a map of a executable. Uh, in graph, in graph based similar, similarity analysis, it didn't look close at this assembly of binary content. It looked out, looked at the flow structure of a uh, executable. For example, bin diff. Bin diff is a very powerful tool to analyze and uh, compare executable file in the graph based field. It offers very detailed information about what similarity in which parts of two executable file. It's used to, uh, it's, it's usually used to do variability analysis, patch analysis, exploit development. However, when use, um, BINDIF, it only can process to fire at the same time. And the performance, uh, actually, the performance is good, 
but compared to the tool set uh, we just mentioned, it's a little slow. That's because it doesn't uh, only do graph comparison, but also disassembly comparison. Okay, until now. And uh, another issue is how to scale it. Until now, uh, there's very show introduced, introduction from, uh, institution about the tool set or research related to malware classifying. So, before we move on, I have three tests for you all. They are about code graph comparison. Uh, this is the first job. Uh, this is the first test. Are these two code graphs similar? Yes, I think so. They look like uh, the same or similar. The second test is uh, compar comparing more complicated code graph. So are they the same or similar? Yes, I think so. Okay, this, this is the final test. Are they um, the same or similar? Anyone want to answer this question? Raise your hand. Do you want to try? Someone? Okay. Okay, I think it's not. Actually, I, pre I prefer some gift. So I think if someone answer this question, I will give a, gift, a small gift for you. So, so pity. <laughs> Okay, so what if there is something that could um, present a code graph of a uh, executable, now a graph, it's now a graph, but a binary. Then we can calculate a uh, crypto hash of it, or we can calculate file hash of it. That's our basic idea. So now, we want to introduce um, you uh, code graph pattern, aka uh, CGP. The purpose of the CGP is to present a code graph. Okay, so so f uh, our methodology is belong to hybrid taxonomy. First, uh, essentially, uh, CGP is a graph based pattern and uh, that is binary data. So we could combine uh, CGP with crypto hash or file hash. So it's a methodology flow. At the beginning, we have a code graph of a uh, executable. Then we calculate the code graph pattern. The pattern is binary format of data. So we could calculate crypto hash or file hash of it. And finally, we can uh, leverage the application of crypto hash or file hash to do similarity analysis. Okay, so let's start with graph hash. Oh, sorry, let's start with code hash. Uh, code. Let's start with code graph. Okay, this is screenshot display what a code graph look like. We have it by use. IDA Pro. To implement our idea, we use IDA Pro a lot. So the following content will come with the script shops of IDA Pro. So, what is a code graph? From graph point of view, a code graph is composed a set of uh, vertices and uh, a set of edges. Mapping back to uh, making, making, uh, mapping back to uh, an executable, vertices present functions of an uh, executable. From graph, uh, from graph point of view, edges describe the relationship between um, vert vertices. That means vert vertices a go to vertex B. And the mapping back to an executable 
it means uh, execute flow means uh, function A calls function B. So here is a simple abstract code graph example. In this code graph, there, there are vertices from 0 to 9, and they present functions. And there are edges. 1, 2, 9, 2, 2, 0, 2, 2, 0, 5, 2, 9, and, the, and the, as, as the slide show, and the, they, they present relationship between matrices. Okay, first, so first, um, let's go to look at matrices. From IDA, from IDA Pro point of view, a set of vertices is include every function that could recognize and uh, import the function that is from um, dynamic link library. So after getting a set of vertices, we want to assign a value to a vertex. We expect that the value could present a vertex. From graph, point of view is like coloring a vertex. So here is, a, here is an example. Both of code graph share the same layout, and each pair of related vertex has the same colors. So we may say that uh, these two code graph are identical. The next, the next example is uh, also, two is, is similar. Uh, two, two code graph, sh uh, share the same layout. And, uh, there are two red vertices in the right hand side. And one more compared to the left side. So we might be able to say that these two of code graph have 90% similarity. The final example of color vertex. The color in five pairs of vertices in the both code graph is different. We might be able to say that this two code graph has 50% similarity. So that's how a uh, vertex value help to do graph comparison. Now, this is what one vertex, one vertex, uh, very root like. We take two property of function to define the vertex value. They are function address block and the function type. The value is 16 bits from bit zero to say, uh, from bit zero to seven store the address block. And uh, from bit A to 15 is stored function type. And the address block will be from 0 to 50. And the function type will be from 0 to 4. I will explain their def uh, definition in the following slide. So function type. Uh, we ref, uh, we refer this, uh, these five types, uh, five type, uh, five, uh, function type from bin is poor. Uh, bin is poor is, is a subproject of bin diff. They are include, uh, regular function, library function, import function, function, embedded function. Okay, now go to the address block. The address, uh, the address block describes which address block that a function is belong to. So it's kind of normalization processing. He, uh, here is how to get it. So first, we divide whole linear address space into 16 address blocks. 
and then we calculate which address block that each function locates according to its starting address. Sorry. So we, you can see the uh, above uh, screenshot, uh, above picture. Function one is belong to block zero and, and the function two is two. Function three is belong to block one and the function n, function n minus one minus two is belong to block 12. So next is edge. So how do we get a set of edge in a code graph? It's pretty easy with IDA Pro. We check every item's, item's cross reference inf, uh, information in the function. If one item has a code cross reference to another function, then we build a relationship. That means we get the edge between functions. The left hand screenshot is, is print, uh, the code cross reference example in Ida Pro. And the, on the, on the right, on the right side, on the right hand, uh, there are edges listing. Now, we are moving to a code graph traversal strategy. Now, and here now, we already have a set of vertices and a set of edges. The next step will be building a code graph pattern for a code graph. So it's about code graph traversal uh, strategy. Basically, it has two protocols. The first one is start with root vertex. Uh, root vertex is a vertex that has no parents. And then the second one, and then the second protocol is deep first uh, search. So here is a simple traversal example, a DFS example. Uh, we have a code graph as a, as the graph on the right side. Uh, this code graph has a set of vertices. There are one, two, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And the edges is five to nine, five to six, six to one, nine to seven, nine to eight, and the nine to two. And the low vertex is five. So after uh, traversing, the code graph pattern will be five, nine, seven, eight, two, six, one. Okay. So here is a one concept we want to emphasize here: multi-root vertices. In the other world, from graph point of view, there are multi multiple uh, vertices, vertices that doesn't have parents. For example, in this screenshot, uh, there are three roots in this code graph. Having, multi, uh, having multiple root vertices is very common in a code graph. For example, a Windows service DRL. He has two is pole. For example, he has two is poles, uh, service name and the DLO entry point. When loading this service DLO into memory, the contents of DLO entry point will be executed. And the, the Windows service handle, service SVC host, will execute the content of service main to do Windows service job. You can treat this to uh, you can treat this as true starting point of Windows Service DL. And the, from code graph point of view, there are two root vertices. That's, um, there are servicemen and the DL entry point. 
The next, com uh, the next concept that we want to discuss is function reuse. Okay. We want to show you how to deal with function reuse in building code graph patterns. For programming, function reuse is for code reuse and avoid redundancy. And uh, for tra uh, traversing a code graph, reusing function means visiting reused function vertices and uh, its chart vertices more than one time. But for the purpose of efficiency, we just keep on we we keep only the visited vertices in CGP without its chart vertices. Okay, so here is the um, reuse functions code graph example. Uh, we have a set of vertices, a set of edges, and uh, you can see uh, the edges in red word. It means uh, the reuse the function is nine. Okay, so after, after our uh, traversing, the, CG, the CGP will be 597A342061, and 9. And 7, 7, Nine and a seven. Uh, sorry, and a seven a three four two zero will be not will be not be stored in CGP here again. But it's okay because we have stored this sub pattern here when we first time visit test nine. Okay, so this is an example of a code graph pattern. So what a CGP really look like? A blue, the blue present a vertex. Okay, and uh, here is a development environment just for your reference. It include uh, IDA Pro 7.2 and uh, IDA Python MD5 and the uh, SSD. Okay, so here we have a simple uh, demo for you all. So let's open an IDA Pro here. And we, we have already uh, opened an executable. And uh, we run the PLC script. It will help us to calculate uh, graph, graph MT5 and the uh, graph SSD here. Okay, just like this one. It's clear and simple. And we also have a, a batch file that can help you to uh, processing multiple files in the same time. And the, the batch file is go, uh, go gh Python. And uh, you have to set up, uh, you have to assign, uh, IDA pass for it and, uh, uh, the addition, uh, the, the pass of the samples. Okay, let's go. He will show you, he will update the status of the processing. And, uh, after that,
it will give you this this kind of result, and uh, it will tell you uh, it will give you uh, the file name and, uh, and then the executable uh, graph hash graph as deep and the file as deep. So, evaluation. We tell a campaign that we name it Operation Oka as example. And uh, Operation Oka is a long-term cyber uh, spy operation. And most targets are East Asia countries. We disclosed it in 2017. Okay. The low samples of OCA include 322 distinct samples. And uh, we take this 322 sample, distinct samples into 10 families. Uh, the facts are based on tokens communi communication protocol of C2 used by malware. And then this, this is a result by file SSDIP. So you can see the screenshot on the right side. Different colors means, uh, different group. The SDIP similarity rate is 85%. And in this con uh, in this condition, 211 from, uh, Samples uh, from 322 samples could be classified into six to, uh, six, 62 groups. It's about 66 grouping rating rate. And uh, in a screenshot, the white points means the samples that that doesn't get grouping. And this is a result by graph MD5. 260 from 322 samples could be classified into 71 groups. It's about 81 grouping rate. The following upper is um, a result by graph, uh, graph SSDIP. The SSDIP similarity is also 85. And uh, in this condition, 274 from 322 samples could be classified into uh, 67 groups. It's about Eighty-five percent grouping rate. Okay, this is a comparison table. So, uh, after this result, we we can say that um, graph and DeFi has about more fifty percent grouping rate than fire as a steep, and the graph as a steep has about more than 19 grouping rates than file SSD. So for, for OCA case, I think, uh, it's a strong result for us. Okay. So next, next is, uh, next is that, uh, we, Compare the result of, uh, graph as deeper and the uh, families. Uh, with this comparison, we notice some relationship between them. In this script, uh, in this screenshot, the same colors means they are grouping the, together by, uh, graph, graph as a steep. 
So you can see that um, uh, in different malware families, they share the same color point, like three blue circles and uh, uh, two red circles on the right side. That cause our interest. So we take a close look and then we do for formal analyzing, uh, and analyzing on, on the samples in these three blue circles. After that, we learned that this dark gray point, green points and the blue point should be belong to malware family four. Uh, fake DOS. D, uh, sorry, fake DLC. So it means that uh, we might ignore some facts before. Let's go to the red circles. Um, what does the relationship mean after formal uh, analyzing? We realize that uh, these samples share the same papers. The above red circles is NS Packer, and the, the below red circles is Empress. It's quite interesting. Okay. Next, we are moving to uh, accuracy test. So here is what we do. In addition to all kinds of samples, we Calculate graph, uh, graph MD5 and the graph SSD of 10,000 and uh, 150 APT samples. And uh, we compare if there are samples classified as the group of OCA samples. So uh, it means if a lot of other APT samples are grouping, are grouping the with OCA group, the accuracy of the graph hash is low. If not, the accuracy is good. And the reload is, and the reload is um, only one sample from OCA and the two samples from ATB samples are classified, uh, other APT samples are classified as the same group. Okay. And the reason is they share the same paper. Okay, limitation. Graph, graph hash is not so good for paper or simple structure is executable. But I think it's pretty common for static executable analysis. However, in some situations, CGP could recognize some picker routines. And for now, we learn on IDA Pro very much. We need IDA Pro to complete our job. Future world. Right now, we lack of a nice fire test and the ERF and the Mark O file test. We just use graph hash on around uh, 50 to 60 samples of ELO, ELF and the Mark O files. And they work fine so far. It works fine so far. But we still need to test large amounts of this kind of files. In addition to IDA Pro's plugin, we are thinking to make him, uh, we are thinking to make plugins for Radar 2 or G Drive. Publish plan and the schedule. We want to publish POC as open source because we believe that uh, this research could help security intelligence is changing and the do malware classification, and the more security researchers use more influence 
that uh, this research command. Now, it's under Tremichael internal review. So we expect, uh, we expect to publish PLC as soon as possible. Uh, we will update information on my Twitter. Okay. In the end, we want to thank uh, Kenny Lu, Stanley Nanin, and uh, Dun Yi Huang, because they made this research better. Okay. So thank you again uh, for all of you joining this session. So we hope you like it. So is anyone have any question? No, okay. So I can pick up one question. Uh, if, you did, if you could just start with the uh, top question there. Uh, Is there any limitation? To Are there any limitations to the types of program that this technology can be used on, or this approach? Okay. Uh, uh, here's the an answer for Andrew. Um, for for now, uh, our testing is on Windows platform, and uh, we just test fewer sample like uh, Yellow Fire or Mark O Fire. Uh, very very few, but uh, they work too. They work fine so far, but we think we have to. Um, test more five, more, more, um, more among, uh, we, we need to, uh, test large, uh, amount of this, uh, this kind of, um, platforms program. Okay. Have you got any examples of times where this gave incorrect results, where the sample tricked the graph hash? Um, no, no, but, um, we, we, we have, uh, uh, some limitation I just made, just, just as I mentioned, but, uh, for some, uh, simple structure is cutable. Um, the graph hash will become not such a significant, uh, significant, significant for us. Yep. Okay, this is a very good question. So, if, uh, the hunter to, uh, ask, uh, try, do, do we try to use, uh, dynamic brave, uh, behavior of, uh, 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 malware? Okay, I think it might, it, it might be a solution for, the situation that we face, like uh, the Packer similarity analysis. But uh, the problem is, uh, in, in, my, in, my, in my thought, I think we could run this uh, SQL a little bit, and then we keep the status of the, such as a memory, uh, such as a memory status, and then, then we, we run, we calculate the graph hash of it. But the problem is, how do we know when, uh, what is the start point of uh, dynamic analysis? Okay. The next question is, how do we do it, uh, recursive or circus? Okay, just, just I mentioned, I was, uh, I will keep the subroot of, uh, subroot of, uh, of the, of the fun function key is, uh, is, is, uh, is, uh, is like a recursive or circus function call. Uh, so I, I didn't go through all of the, uh, all of its chart, 
uh, Baptist. So it will help us to uh, do more efficient way. Okay, um, so for this question, uh, because I did, did not uh, run on Git Drive, so I don't know if there, uh, if there will be another, uh, any difference between them. Uh, I think it's not necessary. Yeah, it will be a fact because uh, in this methodology is belong to static executable. Uh, is is belong to static analysis. So if the malware dynamic loading module at the runtime, we could not see uh, this kind of uh, information. No. It uh, is focused on malware classification. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have thank any you. more questions from the floor before we finish? We've still got a bit of time. No? Okay. Uh, who's Andrew? Who thank you. That top question. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,